President Biden vowing retaliation after three U.S. troops were killed and dozens more were injured in a drone strike in Jordan over the weekend. These are the first American fatalities since U.S. service members began being targeted by Iranian-backed militants after the Israel-Hamas war started. An Iranian news agency quoted the country's foreign ministry as saying it was not behind the drone strike directly. Joining us right now is Oklahoma Republican Senator Mark Wayne Mullen. He is a member of the Armed Services Committee. And, uh, sir, there are calls very directly coming for a much stronger response about, against this uh, strike. What, what do you think is the appropriate response? Well, we should have already been responding. Listen, there's been 153 attacks on, um, on American interests, American personnel, since October 17th uh, by Iranian-backed uh, terrorist organizations, from the Houthis uh, to, uh, to actors working inside of Iraq and inside of Iran, both. And we have only responded nine times. Nine times with direct hits and delayed. We know every single time they're shooting a drone or they're shooting direct missiles at us. We know where they came from. We can track them. We could respond immediately. The only thing Iranians understand is strength. And, and by trying to think that you don't want to escalate it plays right into their, as I would say, their propaganda. When you, when you, when you just look the other way, they use that as a messaging to the people saying, see, they're afraid of us. This is why we have strength. And it empowers them. When you go after them, they will stop. But, they, but the question is, go after who? Are you suggesting direct strikes on the Iranians who are saying that they are not directly involved with this? Are you saying take out every one of these rebel groups where you know the drones are coming from, where you know the missiles are? Two. You got, you got to go both ways. One, you go directly with action, direct action, at the individuals that's attacking you. And then two, you go directly at Iranians and put the sanctions back in place and pull the money that you gave Qatar back out of the banks. But you're not talking about directly attacking. You're if they continue, you do. financial sanctions first. I think you go after financial sanctions first. If it doesn't stop, then you got to go directly at them. You cannot kill the snake if you don't cut the head of it off. And you don't fear... I mean, look, some people fear that, that something like that then escalates this into some other place that's much worse than where we are now. That's the, that, well, Andrew, that's uh, the, that's uh, the sure. pacifist version of it, right? Sure, sure but you don't, you don't just uh, appease a bully either. At some point, you've got to put, punch a bully in the mouth. And, and what's happening with Iran, Iran is the bully. They are backing all the terrorist organizations around the Middle East. And everyone knows it. There's no question about it. They are doing that. So if you don't go after them, then they're going to get worse and worse and worse. And so it, you may escalate it, but look what happens. They've attacked us 153 times since October 17th, and now they're starting to kill American personnel. We lost, we've already lost three. We're going to continue to lose let me, ask, let me ask you about that specifically, which was Nikki Haley effectively put this uh, at the feet of President Biden and the administration and said that they needed to have been doing more. Is more protecting those people in a different way than they were protected over the weekend? It, or was, is more the punch them in the mouth idea because then they wouldn't have been trying to escalate at all? I think, if, if, I think if you believe sure. that, that would have been the case. I, first of all, let me understand. I don't want a war. I don't want to go back. I don't want to get into the Middle East and fighting again in Iran. Uh, any one of us that's ever experienced that, smelt it, heard it, and been around it, none of us want that happen, happen to the, want that to happen again, Andrew. Right. But the same time, you cannot, you cannot de-escalate something when they're escalating it. You have to respond. And so I get when people are saying that you don't want to get back into this fight. Nikki Haley, sometimes she gets a little more aggressive than what I would probably want to go to. But at the same time, you have to show it. If Trump was in office, I don't think for a second this would be taking place. You know why? Because we would have responded strong and with authority when it first started happening. 153 strikes later, and now you're just now starting to talk tough. You're just now taking serious. That... They don't respond that way. It's not the way the Middle East works. They only understand one thing, and it's strength. One of the complicating factors is the technology that's now being deployed. I mean, this was a drone. Uh, we have Tomahawk missiles that, that we can launch and, and try and protect and take some of these things out with. But people have raised the questions recently. 
how long can you continue to fight thousand dollar drones with million dollar missiles? And this is true. It raises all kinds of questions and implications. What happens? What will you do from your position in Congress uh, in, in terms of looking for finances that we that we dedicate towards this? Well, the unfortunate thing uh, what's happening right now in Ukraine is the war. The fortunate thing that's happening is we are getting used to this technology. Russia is using these drones that uh, Iran is giving them, which is the same ones they're attacking us in the Middle East with. Uh, Ukrainians have figured out how to respond and defend against those in a very cheap and effective manner. We have been able to take some of that technology. So the technology has moved where we don't have to use a million dollar missile to shoot down a $100,000 drone, or in some cases a $30,000 drone. Um, and so we have responded with technology. We're a long ways from getting where we need to be, but we still know where it's coming from. We, it still leaves a, a footprint, as you would say. It's anything. It's the same thing as you use your cell phone. You know where that cell phone uh, went, where the ping was at, and where they where it was going to. We can respond the exact same thing with a drone. We may not be able to pick it up immediately. Where, when, it, when it was first shot, but we know where it originated from, and we don't always know the destination until it hits, though. There aren't too many things that um, the two sides of the aisle can see eye to eye on right now. It's going to get less and less so as we get deeper into an election year. <laughs> what, what is the unified approach that, that, that Congress could address at this and maybe send something to the White House? I, I will say, um, sitting on the Senate Armed Services, Chairman Reed is, uh, is our Democrat chairman. Uh, out of all the committees I've sat on in, in over 11 years, I've never sat, had a chairman work in a more bipartisan manner than Chairman Reed. Okay. He, he's very effective, and the entire committee works that way. And we have a very diverse committee. If you look on it, uh, we, you, we have people that you would think would never get along. We actually really get along and we understand it. We spend a tremendous amount of time in classified briefings uh, with our defense industry, plus with, uh, with the chairman, uh, joint chairmen uh, uh, and, the, and the committee and on the staff. And, and one thing that we're working on is understanding where the industry has to move. The technology that we're using today, Andrew, is not what we were using uh, two years ago on the war on terror. This is a conventional war that the Iranians have, have adapted and we're trying to adapt too. I was going to ask you separately, uh, you mentioned that you thought if, if President Trump or former President Trump was president right. today, this wouldn't happen. Um, are you squarely in the camp that Nikki Haley, who was sitting in that seat uh, literally in the past hour, uh, should, should, should uh, pack it in? Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I, I think she has the right to run. I'm obviously a huge supporter of Donald Trump. I was one of the first senators, I think maybe the first senator to endorse him. I consider him a friend, not just, not just a candidate. There's a long history with that with when my son got real hurt and the reaction that Donald Trump took during that uh, very tough time of the family. Uh, Nikki Haley can run if she wants to run. It's obvious, though, that there's no path for victory. Uh, I'm always up for a good fight if I feel like I can win. If, you, if there's no path there, then you're, you're disrupting at some point. But if she chooses to run, let her go ahead and run until she gets embarrassed in her own state.